All right, we're speaking on relationship toolboxes and what goes in them. So we've covered vision, and I would recommend the next thing that you have in your relationship toolbox is an understanding of the five love languages, which was presented in a book by Dr. Gary Chapman back in the 90s. It has a lot of other books now that are common to that theme of the theory he laid out that there are five principal languages that people speak. They speak these. They speak these through uh, mostly their actions. But what it is is it's a way that an individual is programmed to feel loved, and they tend to show love in that same language. So let's talk about them real quick. The first one would be words of affirmation. So that would be very easy to recognize. It's someone who's always telling you, I love you, I love you, or they're writing you a card or they're writing you a note, I love you. They're saying, you look great. Oh, I love your hair. I mean, they're words of affirmation. They show their appreciation. They show their affection, their affinity for another just through words. So if you are words of affirmation, you love to receive cards that have heartfelt messages in them. You love to receive a little note in your lunchbox or a little note inside your briefcase um, from your beloved who says, or, or a parent to a child, if the child is a words of affirmation, a little note in there is perfect because it just warms their heart, warms their spirit. The second one would be physical touch. Now, physical touch, you will notice very early in life, little children um, may want to sit really, really close to you. And some are, are like, they're not physical touch. And they rarely want to be hugged. That child's love language is not physical touch. When someone's love language is physical touch, they sit really close to you. They hug you. They touch you. They pat you. And you feel very gratified if that's your love language, if someone does that for you. Physical touch. Another love language is acts of service. Now, this one is when someone's not telling you that they love you. They're showing you through doing things for you that serve you. Sounds crazy, but taking out the garbage, doing the dishes. My love language, one probably my principal love language, because I have a couple that are very dominant, and you might find that you do too. But the five love languages uh, was, was an amazing breakthrough for me because it helped me understand, oh my gosh, yes, if somebody does something for me, man, it just endears them to me or, uh, for a long time. Like uh, my husband can, I can come home and he's done the dishes. Oh my gosh, I just want to be all over him. And for someone who's not acts of service, you don't get that at all. But for those of you who are, you get it. You feel loved that way. And so is somebody who feels loved that way, you show them through serving them. Little acts of service. Um, let's see, gifts. Receiving gifts is another love language. I have a couple of friends that gifts is very dominant in their love language. And so I have to be cognizant of that that to choose their gift, that their gift is important, that maybe for them the card isn't as important as the gift. And if they give me a gift, I have to be attentive to opening the gift. And they enjoy that. They enjoy seeing you open the gift and that they that and admire the gift. That's a way of them expressing love for you. The child might go and pluck a flower and bring it to you that's and that would be a great example of acts of service i'm sorry of uh, receiving gifts there's probably an act of service in it but it's more dominant in the gifts language and let's see what is the last one oh quality time the fifth language is quality time um there are people that measure how much you love them by how much time you will dedicate just to them not on your phone, not that that it's it's dedicated to them, that you have their attention, they have your attention, that it's just quality time. It could be a walk on the beach, a walk in the park, a walk. It could be throwing the ball to your dogs together. It could be doing something, but it's together and it's dedicated. It's a conversation. 
you know, t just you two. Maybe you're just sitting, watching a movie together, but it's dedicated. You're not splitting up your time between other things. Those of us who are acts of service, we tend to do that. We we and I have to discipline myself, especially when I'm around friends or family. Who that quality time is their love language because they don't get that when when that attention is splintered in any way or shared with other things they just want that quality time and maybe it's five minutes and maybe it's a half hour maybe it's half a day maybe it's a weekend for couples quality time for a weekend especially when one of their love languages is dominant in the in the quality time is an exceptional way to boost that um, relationship so everyone in your life whether you have children Everybody's got parents. Some of us even have siblings. Some of us have spouses or partners or significant others. How about people in your workplace? How about friends? Play this again. How can you apply the five love languages and then grab the book? Because right now this is just data. When you read the book, he's just he, he gives you so many different scenarios that you can start to identify what love language everyone is in each scenario and you start to own the information and when you conceptualize it when you own it now it becomes a tool in your toolbox and you can grab that out and honestly feeding someone's love language is probably the fastest way to turn a relationship around that i have found regardless of what relationship it is read the book listen to this apply it validate it for yourself i'll see you tomorrow